Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am proud to welcome you to this part of the Kerbal Space Program Career Mode series because this is an exciting one because I feel like it's the culmination of everything that we've learned so far pretty much. And I say learn loosely, like I said, this isn't a tutorial, but we are going to land and safely return a Kerbal from the moon, hopefully. So, we have these missions to plant a flag on the moon, get science from the surface of the moon, and do this miscellaneous stuff near the moon. So, go on an or orbital spacewalk and return to Kerbin from orbit of the moon. We're going to do more than that. We're going to return to uh, Kerbin from the surface of the moon. Um, again, I know that most people will say Mun, and that's the correct pronunciation. I don't care. I like saying that I'm landing on the moon. Because it's just neato burrito, man, to land on the moon. Now, for this, I didn't know if it would be best to spend a lot of time doing a full walkthrough. Because, like I said, this isn't a tutorial on the build. And I didn't know if that was going to get boring for people. So, what I'm going to do is introduce you to Moon Boy. I've already pre-built this ship. And based on the Delta V and everything else this should be overkill for what we're doing like I said this isn't a tutorial because there I can promise you many more efficient and cheaper ships to get to the surface of the moon and back but like I said this game is so liberal with the amount of money and resources it gives you I love overkill so instead of doing a full guide if this does piss people off and people want to see a full build of this ship I will do it in another part but for now I think it's best to kind of quickly go through the logic of what we're doing here and get right to flying because I think that that's probably the part that people like the most I actually like build guides and stuff like that but I know most people kind of don't so we start with a pretty typical thing we have our parachute and the same command pod we've been using this entire time it will be Jebediah Kerman that is flying I have these two mystery goo units here for symmetry we really are not going to need both because we have mystery goo data from pretty much everything but the surface of the moon um, we have a science junior I did go back and collect a bunch of uh, science junior data from places that I missed in the last mission that I was upset about um, so we only need mystery uh, science junior data from the surface of the moon we have power we have batteries we have these landing struts these are new for what we're gonna be doing obviously um, I'm actually gonna remove the fairing for now so we can get a better view of everything so when these come out they're going to be like this, and they're going to extend past the engine that's in here. And they are going to be just fine. We have struts connecting these. I'm hoping that's enough to keep this thing from wobbling. Also keeping things from wobbling will be the actual staging itself. So basically, it's a very long ship. And the longer a ship is, the more it's going to want to wobble. But I'm hoping that we're high enough in the atmosphere by the time both of these sets of boosters are off that it won't be a huge deal. Not sure how this bit is going to go. But here's the logic, okay? This is a bigger ship because I wanted to have a full tank of fuel that's purely dedicated to deorbiting the moon, landing on it, reorbiting the moon and getting home so these 400 or so 220 actually units of liquid fuel and oxidizer or whatever this is going to be overkill generally but you know sometimes you make mistakes and i wanted to have more so then we're going to have a stage below it that's purely dedicated to getting to the moon orbiting it and planning kind of our landing that's what this stage is. So because we have these two stages, because again, this does have to land on a celestial body and come back, it's going to be require, you know, these two stages it's going to be heavier. So to deal with the fact that it's heavier, we have a dedicated orbit stage, which is these fuel tanks right here, and it's attached to a swivel fuel engine. And then below that, we have what's a pretty typical, except longer, uh, main stage main booster which is right here and then we're actually surrounded by four 
external boosters and they're doing something called asparagus staging so the this stage is going to run out it's going to feed a full tank of fuel into this stage which is when it's done going to lead a full tank of fuel into this stage this should be because between these stages we're up to what is it like 3400 meters a second of delta v this should be enough on its own to get us well into space and after that this should be more than enough to orbit this should be enough to get to the moon and orbit it this should be enough to do the landing and everything else i would normally have like the kerbal engineer thing on this but i'm going to show you that for landing you really don't need it although you know knowing your suicide burns and stuff is helpful um i'm more of a fan of just over engineering things like crazy and then you know the world just goes round so i think that it's a it's pointier than last time uh yeah but it should be fine I don't have to resave Moonboy. In fact, I'm just going to reopen Moonboy. So that. Because I hadn't the fairing the way that I wanted. I'm very anal about my fairings. Um, some more logic here. There's no fins on it. Instead, I have a bunch of reaction wheels. And I'm hoping that the two batteries and these solar panels that are going to start off inside the fairing are going to be enough to power all this. I think it'll be fine. But we'll. Uh, We'll find out for sure. Anyway, that was all a lot of preamble, but it was quicker than showing you the whole build. Like I said, I'm pretty confident that this will be this will be fine. I'm not great at the game. I tend to mess up a lot, and that's why, unlike you know, you would get from somebody who's a expert at the game, I I go overboard. But I like going overboard. Why not? We have a very important mission right now, ladies and gentlemen. This poor little man, Jebediah, who's really excited, he is going to fly, land, plant a flag, and safely return from the moon. He is boldly going where no Kerbal has ever gone before. In three, two, one, blast off. Now this doesn't have the thrust to ratio of the other ships, obviously it's a lot more cumbersome. So I'm going to wait for it to get to about 100 meters a second and then I'm going to slowly start tipping over. I did it a little bit beforehand, but you cannot be too careful with this puppy. I like to stay towards, I don't like to leave the circle. That's when things start flipping around and they get a little treacherous. So this is about as far as I'm willing to push it. If that means not getting the 45 degree angle at 10 kilometers, that's fine. In fact, it looks like we're going to maybe miss... Yes, no... No, nah, I pretty much got there. Alright, well that's good. Now I'm going to try to ease up, kind of hold about here without, you know, flipping back over. This does not have the most thrust, this ship, by a long shot. So I'm just trying to keep prograde, but I'm trying to also not do anything to uh, force it any more forward than it has to go. The fact that our time to apoaps is still increasing means that we are in pretty good shape but once this final stage goes and all we're left with is the swivel engine it's probably going to be a very very low thrust to weight ratio so we have to be mindful of that in fact we're about to lose this next stage there it goes a safe deployment and you can tell our speed is not increasing with any well, with any speed but we're still in very good shape as long as this time to apoaps isn't going down we are safe I'm actually gonna hold a right click on that so we can see it every time we go in and out 
but now we're past the aerodynamic forces and we should be again increasing our time so I'm not gonna go completely flat like I said this is gonna increase very slowly you can't be too careful again I'm confident that it's going to be fine this is actually turning out to be a very efficient launch and that number keeps rising and I love it so I'm gonna flatten out a little bit but not too much I don't want to go overboard like I said it's delicate right now depending on how long this is I'll don't know whether or not this is gonna be one part or two I don't want it to be an hour long but it probably will be that long a mission I'll figure it out. If if it does get to be an hour long, I'll very much disclose that. But look, it looks like we're going to have... We're almost going to have a periaps by the time we run out of fuel in this stage. It's going very, very well. We're getting close to running out of fuel, but we're not there yet. If we get up to 100 kilometers, I'm just going to cut it off. In fact, we are. That looks gorgeous, darling. So we're going to destage this. We're high enough now that we don't need to worry about this anything inside the fairing being non-aerodynamic. We can activate this engine, but we're not going to use it yet. Again, this is going to be the stage that we use to circularize. Our apoapsis isn't even going down by anything because there's just so little air where we are. So we're just going to try to circularize, get this up to a hundy and what's this now 101 99 I accept that our burn for this is only seven seconds I added a feature of the game this is not a mod or a cheat a feature of the game that uh, tells you more exactly when to start your burns but it's still gonna tell you about halfway about halfway uh, before your, and after your node. The only difference is this accounts for the change in weight as you lose fuel and you stage changes. I'm just going to speed up time a little bit. Almost sped up a little too much. Got a little ahead of myself. I'm going to quick save because we can't do enough of that right now. Five, four, three, two, one. Seven second burn. Five, four, three, two. Trying to keep to the target. I'm gonna try to just get up and do the last spit of delta V that we need to kind of get this where I want it. Let's see what our periaps is. Ninety-eight and a hundred. A hundred and one hundred one. That is a pretty circular orbit, ladies and gentlemen. And we have plenty of fuel to allow this swivel engine to get us probably most of the way to the moon. Now I didn't even account for that so this is going to be plenty of delta V. Oh while we're here I could show you something else I did. Using the same tricks that we used for the uh, satellite before I built a pretty atomic looking uh, network of satellites around the moon in case we ever want to do any kind of unmanned missions here and we need the communication. We now have plenty of it. So we're probably never going to need it, but because this is going to clutter the map too much and confuse me, I'm going to shut it off. But that was a little pre-gaming that I did. I accidentally focused the view instead of setting this as the target. I am a stupido. And we're just going to get a reasonable encounter, which that's less than reasonable. Eh, I always like when the encounters look like that. And like I said, wow, we're going to really get 80% of the way there with my circularization stage. I know some people, just for the sake of authenticity, will probably drop their stages um, as they intended to use them. I'm not. I'm greedy. I like to minimize, you know, maximize the safety for when I mess up. So if... I can get more Delta V when I'm in and around the moon. I shall gladly take advantage of it. It's a 58 second burn. 
Uh, we have 834 Delta V to go, and we have 689 left in this stage. But, oh my god, we have so much Delta V. We have so much of it, guys. That makes me happy. We might even be able to do some of the... Uh... Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself and talk out of my butt. But we could we could get pretty far with the uh, second to last engine stage. So we just burn in. The fairing is already deployed. I'm just gonna throw this stage down here and see if that does anything. Because otherwise, I'm gonna have to do like you know what. I don't want to rock the boat. Now I'm just going to have to, like, click space an extra time before before we uh, light up this engine. It's inconvenient, but it's not a big deal. Fairing stage gone. Deploy. Good. And we have still about 13 seconds left. And I'm just trying to keep to the target as we get this as close to the maneuver as possible. Bam. And we're just going to lightly tap and get it close. Pretty spot on right there, boys. Wow. Me like. All right. Next part. I shouldn't have yelled. Add a maneuver. I almost hit warp here. That would have been a mole steak. And we could focus our view now on the moon. And it's nice to get as equatorial an orbit as possible. So that's what I'm going to... Ooh. The scroll wheel is a cruel mistress. Stop doing that! Like every light tap. Ah, where'd we go? Wow. Really went far out. Okay. Jeez, every time. I'm sorry, folks. I promise, this is like my mouse betraying me. Okay, so, Moon Periaps of 59, we can do better than that. Um, I would get below 20, but not much farther below 20. 18 is good. And again, I'm just going to try to do little tiny adjustments to try to get this thing really equatorial. That looks nice. The moon is on an equatorial orbit with Kerbin. And it's nice to be able to kind of launch on the same plane that you're coming back. Because it'll minimize the delta V that you need in order to get back. Warp here. Let's get ready for this tiny burn. And we're going to have to be really careful about it. In fact, I'm going to focus on this periapsis more than this periapsis. I want to have this in my sights. Now, I think I already mentioned when you're kind of like in between bodies, the uh, proximity to your maneuver node starts to matter less and less. You don't have to do like the halfway thing. You, you want to be a little bit close, but it doesn't have to be completely exact like right here is fine okay let's get ready to hit it and we're just gonna stay on this and we're going to watch that get down and we just want to stay above 10 meters, uh, kilometers. Because that's when craters can start to get in the way, and we don't need that smoke. That should be good. I like it. Do you like it? Because I like it. We still have so much fuel in this stage. I love it. Plenty to do this circularization burn and get nice and close. The periaps is way too low now. So, I think it was about 17 and 17. 17 and 17. Okay. We can get over here. It's now a 30 second burn. 
which is 267.9 units of delta V. But again, look, we have over 900 in this. Huh? When I said I was into overkill, I didn't mean like this. This is overkill city, baby. Still love it. So, while we're here, we can get a nice look at the moon. We haven't seen it in a little while. It's good to be back. And we can look at what our missions are here. So, uh, plant a flag on the moon and recover data from the surface of the moon is obviously stuff that we can't do yet. It's saying that I completed orbiting the moon. I actually didn't orbit the moon yet, but that's wrong. What we can do is I'm going to rotate the ship and I'm going to try to just get it in a reasonable thing. It doesn't super matter. And I'm going to do the orbital spacewalk. Got our EVA. I don't think that there's anything I can do here. So we're just going to re-engage SIS. We're going to point towards our target. In fact, to make it even easier, I can just have it set to retrograde now. And get close to our maneuver. I'm going to quick save again. Now would be the time to do so. Why not? Automatically goes to the retrograde marker, which means less faffing around when I get ready to do this burn. Which we're going to do in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We're going to get there. 4, 3, 2, 1. Bam! 30 seconds away from glory. The glory of a successful, successful circularization around the moon. Which I don't think we did in the last part. We just did a flyby, right? So this is the first time we're going to have a nice low orbit of the moon. If we did nothing else, we would just stay here. Just going to keep an eye on the periaps and make sure that it doesn't get below the bad zone. It does not. We're fine. A pretty spotless equatorial orbit around the moon. That's another quick save, ladies and gentlemen. And we can really start planning our landing. And whether or not I'm going to kill off like the vertical velocity using this stage that still has 640 units of delta V in it. Uh, I guess it depends on how much I have left once I do. Once I get uh, into a spot, which is looking good over here. Once I get into a position where I'm going to be hitting the moon. So you see that I'm pulling this down. And what I was looking for was a nice long expanse of flat surface. You don't want to land in a crater. You don't want to. The moon is pretty hilly. So the least chance you have of landing on a hill, the better. So I'm just trying to get. We'll get over we'll get over this region and that'll be a nice by the moon standards anyway a nice flat area it's only a five second burn we have to be very careful right here again landing in a crater you can get good science from it if it's its own biome and all that but it is a rough prospect I might not go all the way because I think, again, it's only a five second burn. I think I'm going to try to kill off a lot of vertical velocity using this other stage. I mean, why not? Horizontal velocity, I mean, I'm sorry. You don't want to land sideways. You kind of want to come down straight down. That's the easy way, or I mean, easy is relative, of landing on a planet. The... Oh, the mage way would be to do some kind of a suicide burn, but that is 
crazy risky. And you really need to have like a computation for that. I'm going to point towards the normal vector because I just don't like how... We're not going to land anywhere close to this crater, but I just don't like how I'm kind of rimming it right now. All right. So we are going to come down over here. I guess over here is where we can start that uh, point retrograde, first of all. We could start ye old murder of horizontal velocity. We're just going to get over these craters here. This is a hilly area, but the moon is hilly. So I'm just going to use a bunch of this. Try to really slow down how far we're going this way. Looking good, looking good. Mind where the sun is. Where is it? Over there? So you know which way your shadow is going to be. So you can eyeball your landing. We pretty much killed a lot of horizontal velocity. I'm finally going to get this out. And I'm going to activate the engine. And start burning just a little bit. So I know that I'm far away from where that thing's going to land. We don't need to get blown up. We can try to find our shadow. Oh, it is getting close. I'm going to kill more velocity. Alrighty. Now the problem is that your above sea level on the moon is nowhere close to the actual height where you land. Because the actual height where you land is going to be in the, you know, that's sea level for the moon is like the bottom of a crater. So we're probably going to land whatever, like 2,000 meters above sea level. So you really have to eyeball your landing or have Kerbal Engineer out, which will tell you your altitude. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. So right now, I'm just playing with the throttle. You want to land going, well, be below 10 meters a second, but well below 10 meters a second. You want to be going maybe around f 5, less than 5. We're getting close. Obviously, where your shadow kind of meets you is where you're going to be hitting the ground. Hopefully, this isn't, you know, this is a relatively flat spot. We won't really know, unfortunately, until we're really close to the ground, which we are. But let's get well below that landing spot. Cut the engine. Oh, don't tip. Auto save because we have freaking done it. We're on the moon. We have safely landed on the moon and we have so much liquid fuel. Um, it was definitely a, I said definitely. It was certainly um, not proper that I took that bit of debris that it's now two and a half kilometers away and use that to kill our horizontal velocity. But all it means is that we are going to have all the Delta V in the world to get back. We have a pretty much a full tank. Um, again, I don't know how these parts are going to shape up, so I'm not going to talk about that. Instead, what I'm going to do is start hoarding science. Observe mystery goo from the surface of the moon. Well, from the moon's midlands. Um, there are different biomes, but we are probably not going to see any other biomes today. Log pressure. Log temperature. Collected and recorded temperature. Some of these have neat little uh, descriptions and some don't. Crew report from the moon's midlands. Okay, so we're doing good. Observe materials bay. We got the materials bay down to the surface of the moon. 100 science for taking this back. Whereas transmitting it would have only been 35. Um, that's the reason why it's good to bring a scientist that can refill these experiments. But I did not do that. Instead, I brought Jebediah, our pilot, so I could point retrograde automatically and not have to worry about any kind of... Uh, issues there. I was able to just focus on how I was going to land. Take the data. Take the data and close the doors. We can do an EVA report. 
You look up and search the sky for Kerbin. Suddenly, you feel very small. Indeed. Indeed. Very beautiful. We can store those five experiments. And we can begin to step foot on the surface of the moon. I'm going to try to get my jetpack so I don't hit some landing gear or some other horrible mistake. Let's try to back up. And nice and easy. Oh, sticky keyed. I hate sticky keys. And probably getting up there, I'm probably going to get sticky keyed again. But it's okay. Because we are walking on the moon. Jebediah Kerman, you are a regular Neil Armstrong. And you can tell how happy he is about it. Look at his little face. Oh, I'm so happy. Jebediah Kerman, plant your flag. And we're going to put Moon Boy. Because the Moon Boy has landed. We're going to take a surface sample. Keep experiment. 120 science for that. Oh boy. And we can just stare into the expanse of the unknown. And I wish I remembered the hotkey to get rid of the UI so I could take a screenshot. But I'm not too worried about that. What I'm worried about is getting this poor little man safely back home. But in the meantime, just take a look at what we have accomplished. But it's all for naught if we don't save this man's poor soul. So for that, we're going to have to be very careful to not break anything on the way up. We're going to have to take our EVA propellant, and we're just going to slowly not get sticky key. Damn it! I hate the sticky keys. I don't get the point of them, other than they exist to infuriate gamers. Okay, we made it. Store experiments. Get in the capsule, Jeb. You've earned it. Auto save again, since we quick save, whatever. Since we didn't break our landing gear on the way in. Let's review what we got. We got a surface sample from the moon's midlands. We got an EVA report from the moon's midlands. Mystery goo. Atmospheric pressure. Temperature scan and materials bay. That should be all of them. And now we should get ready to take one last look at what we accomplished. Because we got to get Jeb home safely. Now... To get Jeb home safely. Again, Kerbin is on an equatorial orbit from uh, the moon and vice versa. So we are going to want to hit that 90 degree vector that we're used to. And to do that, we're going to hit uh, stability assist. And it should be pointed basically where we are right now. But I'm going to make sure. We're going to look at this map. We're going to look for the 90. And we're just going to try to find it. Oh. Yep, we are pointed towards it, and at this point we can kind of just hit those engines. Oh, I'm going the wrong way here. We can flatten out pretty quickly as long as we stay on this 90 degree vector, and we can look at where our Apple Apps is going. I would say around 10,000 would be a good level to, but because we have extra Delta V, we can go even higher, I say. Let's get up to like 15. Good. That'll do. We are two minutes away, which is plenty of time to plan this maneuver. Where we circularize back around. 15, 15. Works for me. Guys, can you believe it? We have just achieved liftoff from the moon that we landed on. We can still see our moon boy flag on the Midlands, as well as some debris that actually survived the ordeal. That is interesting. We can start pointing towards our maneuver. It says this is going to take 352 meters a second to Delta V. Well, we're going to have a thousand left to return to Kerbin after this, which, spoiler alert, is an insane amount. Well, more than enough. 
almost uh, we can go to min miss if we felt like it amount, which I'm not doing because I'm not insane. Instead, we're just going to circularize around the moon. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 20 seconds away from glory again. We achieved our put, plant the flag on the moon mission. Recover science from the moon. We're going to be able to do pretty soon. It looks like I lost the orbital spacewalk thing. Um, maybe I had to be in orbit to do that, but that's not a huge deal. Let's see what our situation looks like. We have an apoapsis, a 20... All right, well, we, we overdid it, but not a big deal. Um, I have to achieve this orbital spacewalk again, which is weird. We orbited the moon, EVA, got the spacewalk, and now our only job left is going to be to return from orbit. I shouldn't have been pointed straight down when I was doing that. Uh, we can put the brakes back on. We actually lost communication with Kerbin because I didn't bring an antenna with me for that huge relay that I had. But it doesn't matter because I have no plans on not returning this data back with me. Uh, when we do re-entry, we're definitely going to lose these batteries. I said definitely. We're certainly going to lose the battery and the mystery goo, but it's not going to matter because we're not going to need power at the, that point, and we already have all the data safely with us here. But we really accomplished the worst of it. This is comparatively the easy part. The only thing that we have to worry about now is where we're exactly landing on the Kerbin, which I'm not good enough to uh, really judge, unfortunately. Um, we planned the flag... Return to Kerbin and transmit or recover data from the surface of the moon. Those will be completed when we safely land, hopefully not on a mountain. This is the reason why quick saving is a big deal. So, how do you get from the moon back to Kerbin? This isn't something that we had to do before. Well, when you want to speed up or you want to go further out, you want to go towards the rotation, the orbit of the planet. So you would kind of go kind of here and point this way, and that would take you further out. So if you're going towards Minmus, that's kind of what you would do. If you want to lower your orbit, you want to go in the opposite direction. You want to go in the opposite direction of the way the moon is going, which will slow you down and get you towards this. So that would be about here. We have so much Delta V that this doesn't have to be perfect. Oops. But you can see that that has us going with a pretty small burn right back towards Kerbin. And the only thing that we have to worry about here is getting back below 30 kilometers. 30 kilometers is low enough that the aerodynamic forces, I pronounced aerodynamic correctly, yay for me. The aerodynamic forces are going to be enough that you won't escape Kerbin's orbit again, atmosphere I mean. Basically, if you were, if you only went down to 60, the there wouldn't be enough aerodynamic force to keep you from just shooting back into space. And then you would have to go around and around and around and around and around. And 30 kilometers is enough that you will fall back onto the surface of Kerbin uh, using your heat shield and just drag. Um, it's also not so low that you're going down too fast that you're going to overheat or not be able to deploy your parachute in time. 30 kilometers is a pretty nice sweet spot. So this is a prograde burn. Yes, even though we're slowing down because we're shooting off this way in the opposite direction of the orbit, it's a prograde burn. We could warp to our next maneuver. Just in case this ultimately puts us in a bad spot, I'm going to quick save again. It's not essential that you really do it along the uh, the maneuver marker because this is not, this doesn't have to be that precise. Believe it or not, it does not have to be very precise. Because the only thing that really matters is getting your periaps to about 30 kilometers. 
which angle you come in at or any of that other stuff. It doesn't super matter as long as, again, you're not landing somewhere treacherous. Start the burn. Now, once we escape the moon sphere of influence and we're falling back to Kerbin, I'm going to cut the engines and start getting really uh, fine with what I'm doing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to just focus on this. And again, we want to get below 30, but we don't want to kill ourselves. Not below 30. We've got to get around 30 without killing ourselves. So I'm looking... I'm looking, we're getting there, getting there, perfect, that'll do. And we are going to close the maneuver, and we can warp here and say goodbye to the moon. Farewell, moon. It's been real. It was nice walking on your face, but we are now back in the gravitational pull of this guy. It's good to double check, make sure that nothing's changed, especially when you decouple. There's a good chance that the game will just decide that you're not landing in the same uh, periaps that you were before. I know I mix up, mix up my terminology a lot, but you see why it's really hard to judge where you're going to land from this far out because this thing just rotates on you. It's kind of the nature of celestial bodies, I guess. They tend to rotate. But it looks like we're going to unfortunately be landing on the night side of the planet. There's not a whole lot I can do about that other than if I wanted to kind of come out to 70 and then really get cute with how I was landing. I probably had enough uh, Delta V to do that, but that would just be more time spent. Instead, we're rolling with what we have here. 380 kilometers. I'm going to get to about 100. That's fine. And now I can decouple this stage. I'm going to use my stability assist and just point it retrograde. I'm going to hope for the best now. We're, our time warp is going to end once we get back into sphere of influence and I do recognize this area and it's very much grasslands there's a chance you might land on a hill but not super likely um, odds are we're going to be okay uh, again I would normally have Kerbal Engineer out to tell me the difference between and again I told you we're gonna lose these experiments I guess I could just spin this thing around and that would prevent them from blowing up. It's not essential. We can just go for the fireworks show. We can let them explode. It's fine. Um, I would normally have Kerbal Engineer out. Wait for it. Boom. Boom. Um, I would normally have Kerbal Engineer out to tell me the difference between our surface and the sea level. It looks like they're really... According to this, is there's no difference, really. So, that's a good sign. Just to play it safe for now, I'll raise the altitude that this is going to deploy a little bit. Um, there's some hills over here. There goes the mystery goo and the batteries. Yeah, see? But it looks like we're pretty far away from them. I think this is going to work out. These missions have all been satisfied. And we did something pretty freaking cool, didn't we? There's some more, looks like rough terrain over here that I'm seeing below the clouds. I'm still... Oh, now it looks like there's about a 500 or so difference. So I'm just going to go up to 1500. I never really use this. I usually use Kerbal Engineer, so I'm not sure how precise it is. But it's looking like about 800. So again, I'm just focused on being safe. Once I get through the clouds and everything, I can kind of have a good idea. I turn the brightness kind of way up so I can actually see at night. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I'm a baby. 
and I really am, don't fancy accidentally landing on a night side and not being able to see what the heck is going on. I'm much more fancy. Uh, five, seven. Oop, it's down to like just a few hundred difference between sea levels, so I can probably go down to like 1300. This is very. This is the grasslands. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Why do I? Why is my crew report an overwrite? Oh, I forgot to take it. Ah, that was stupid of me. I probably missed out on two or three science from that. I kind of want to get below the clouds just so I can see where I'm landing, but it looks like it's not super going to happen. So I saw like a 500 difference. So. I'm just going to get ready to pop the chute and hope for the best. We're basically going straight down at this point, so there's not much I can do other than hope and pray. It looks like a pretty flat area to me, doesn't it? Some hills over here. As long as we don't land right on a very big slope, we'll be fine. And it doesn't look like there's one here. Which certainly makes me happy, and Jeb looks excited about it. Let's take a look at inside but our cockpit view Jeb's having a good time not a lot not a lot of view here falling at six meters a second we are still 700 meters above the surface it turned out to be 700 meter difference between sea level and the surface but no problem here we can speed up time and hope that there isn't just a sharp slope right here that I can't see. That would not be nice. Three hundred meters away from Jebediah getting to say that he landed on the moon and made it home sweet home. Oh, that's sexy. Woo! We can go in here, take the crew report that I forgot to take before, and restore it just in case we don't have anything from the grasslands. Just in case. Crew report. Nope, it looks like we did it. Uh, let's EVA with Jeb and let him celebrate. Celebrate the fact that he's back home after... Landing on the moon. He can even take a little surface sample for two science. Why not? He hasn't breathed fresh air in a while, so why doesn't he remove his helmet? And why doesn't he celebrate the occasion by planting a flag? And he could say, Moon Boy is home. What a journey for Jebediah Kerman. He has done it. He can go back into his capsule, wait for the Kerbal Space Center to pick him up, give him a nice pat on the back, and see how much science and money he recovered from his mission. Recover. The end result. Is come on. It is. It is. Four hundred and twenty-four science. Ooh yeah, Jeb, you did good, boy. You did good. Crew report from the moon's midlands. Moon, 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 moon. We get it. We landed on the frickin' moon and made it all the way back home. We have 1.4 million monies. That's nice. That makes me feel good. Uh, moon missions completed. 3 XP game. He didn't level up from that? Are you kidding me? Oh, well. Jeb deserves a much-needed coffee or a, something a little bit stiffer. Whatever he wants. What I am focused on now is this other active mission that I had, which is build a new orbital station around Kerbin. I thought it'd be neat. I thought it'd be neat to build a space station. Now this one is very, looks pretty generous in terms of what it needs you to do. Some of these can be out of control, 
but a facility supporting at least five Kerbals in orbit of Kerbin, that's very, uh, that's very doable. And it can sh also show you the secret to getting pretty much all the science you need to unlock the biggest and best stuff. So in the next part, I'm going to use this 520, 542 science, which is hopefully enough to unlock everything we need in order to get that space station built, put it in orbit of Kerbin, and earn a freaking ton of science, which can unlock the best parts in the game. Guys, we have been to the moon. We have built a ship, a beautiful moon boy. We landed him. We might have over-engineered him just a tad, but we landed him on the moon, and we have safely returned home from the surface of the moon. We have boldly gone where no Kerbal has gone before, and I'm very pleased. We'll build a space station in the next part. Until then, I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.